I pour up yellow test, I pour up yellow test, cause I gotta have it. Yeah. I pour up yellow test, I pour up yellow test, cause I gotta have it. Another tough week for the Jets, and not a whole lot to really say about it going in. You know, obviously the Jets don't have any any playoff implications, but um, you're just looking for every all the young players to play well, I guess. And you kind of got that today, so I'm just gonna get into it. Not a whole lot I can do to to talk about it uh, before even starting. I'm just gonna get right into it. And you know, some crazy stuff happens throughout this game. Like the whole the Antonio Brown thing was was just insane, and I'm probably that's going to be a big topic on on Wednesday just because it was crazy. Uh, I don't know if the, this condensed uh, film has it, but I hope it does just so I can talk about it when it happens. But I'm going to try to keep away from that since we talk about it Wednesday. And this is more about the game than an Antonio Brown reaction. But I was thinking about going live after that, after the game, just to talk about it because it was pretty damn crazy. I didn't get to see this run live, unfortunately, but I mean, talk about how good Michael Carter's been. He unfortunately ends up getting hurt and, and can't play, and I think he only gets three touches the entire game, but you have to feel good about him going forward, and I obviously I like him a whole lot, but I just don't think that the Jets should be content at running back, whether that means adding a free agent or drafting someone later. That's for you to, or for Joe Douglas to decide, but I would not be content with, with this line, uh, with this with these this running back room right now even though i am really i think it's pretty deep like i want to deep's maybe not the right word but i I, tevin coleman's a good role player michael carter's a solid solid rb1 and austin walter's been a good role player i wouldn't really call him a role player but he's he's filled in nice with with some dudes getting banged up so i think that's carter that was carter's last touch I guess he got hurt on that. I didn't even realize what play he got hurt on, but I think it was this one. So, yeah, they're going to show it. So, yeah, a really creative uh, play call. You know, you give Barrios the option to either throw it or run it, and he maybe could have had a throw, but, you know, when it, when there, you know the C just parts, parts like that, you, you hit it for sure. So, yeah, I mean, six 7 nothing to start the game. Really good first drive. You know, obviously the highlight was that 55-yard run. But yeah, I mean, if you're the Jets, you're feeling good about where you're at right now. And this defense looked good all game. Like I can't, like yeah, I know they start folding, but they're playing. They're really outmatched here. I mean, Tampa's a Super Bowl contender, and for this game to go down to the last play like it did, I'm not sure what it means, but it means something. And I'm gonna keep it real. Like I kind of stopped paying attention after the whole Antonio Brown thing. Like I, I was doing a good job watching. Like I watched the whole game, but it was just so just distract. Like I couldn't believe it. like what. Like I just never seen anything like that live. Is, is all. It's probably the craziest thing I've ever seen live watching football before. Definitely getting into that on Wednesday, which I'm I'm excited to talk about it. You know. But now is not really the the time nor the place, and I hope this stream doesn't pause a whole lot. <sighs> but it looks like it will be, and that's gonna make me very mad if it continues to do that. I I think it should be good though. I usually have my eyes on it, and I didn't this time. And then yeah, if it pauses, I usually make an adjustment, which I probably should have done earlier. But it is what it is. It's a bad missed tackle by Michael Carter there. I mean, Gronk's friggin' 40. He's 35. You can't, you, you gotta get him on that first one. You know, it makes it's just such a big difference on how an offense can run from second and nine between second and four. Like, t- 
Tampa has such a good line. I couldn't. I was in awe that they had three Pro Bowl um, linemen, and they said Kappa was an alternate, and then that's not even including Donovan Smith, who's a, a damn good left tackle. And you know, I know, I know it's early to to for the jury to be out on Becton, but just solely from how Worfs has, has been playing, you're starting to think that Becton was the the wrong choice. And I'm not saying that, like I can say that without without really having Becton anything to do with that with that uh, judgment. It, I just even though I do think Becton's been a bit of bust, a bit of a bust to this point, and I know people are, would debate me till they're red in the face. You know, it was a freak injury. Like that's what people are going to be saying. I'm not saying that. I just think Worfs is is super talented, and he's been you know succeeding at right tackle, which people thought he would have position um, trouble with because of his short arms. Like, but he's been good. Yeah, that that fade. You know, I know I, I say those fades never worked. That was a little different than that. Just straight up, you know, try to freak him. Um, I believe Mike Evans freaks someone later though, where he gets on top of him. But that was more of that back shoulder. Uh, that's a, I think a high percentage play that was, especially to Mike Evans. You know, like when I when I was saying bad stuff about the that last play fade to AJ Green, it's not because. Well, I do think the fade's a bad play, but also it's like why are you throwing it to AJ Green? Like if that was to the, like I said, if it's to Hopkins, I'd be fine. Like that's a that's a throw you can make to Mike Evans. This line gets is was so bad today, and you know you see the offense moving the ball now because everybody's still playing. But when they start getting hurt, you know it, it becomes a little bit a little bit rough. I like to see Fant running down the field like that, bro. I love Fant. Um, he's got to be back next year. It'd be a huge mistake if he's not on this Jets roster, for sure. And I remember everybody was was like telling Joe Douglas it was such a bad signing when it happened but if you look at the contract they front loaded the first year when they weren't paying anybody anyway and then the second year so basically if he was bad in the first year they could have cut him without a lot of repercussions but he's just you know even outplayed all the the money that they gave him so he's going to be getting a big contract this offseason from someone if it's not the Jets but I hope it's the Jets I mean, Zach was just surgical to start. He was, He's not, he stopped missing, as I say that, he stops missing the, the throws he's got to make. I mean, that one looked like it was going to be a loss anyway. He didn't miss a lot of those easy throws that, that are uh, not really concerning to me, but he made a lot of good throws. That was a good one too, like over the middle, a drop, you got to catch that. It was a nice throw here. Like these are, like that's a throw that he, he was missing the past couple weeks, and then... Those are the ones that you're like, all right, it's a tough throw, kind of. But on top of that, he didn't miss those flat throws that he was, which is good to see. I mean, you knew that it wasn't an arm thing, and it was just a mental thing. That one's got to be on him a little more, I think. Um, that didn't look bad. I, I, maybe I'm misremembering something I saw live, but I remember thinking, like, it got to be a little more on him on that one. Maybe it wasn't that one, though. And, yeah, Barrios got two touchdowns, bro. He's got Barrios is a guy that has to be back next year. I mean, maybe not has to because Elijah Moore is a stud in the slot, but we'll see. We'll see what what kind of market he he garners this off season. Like, I don't think the Jets should be willing to to pay him like a, a air quote st uh, star slot, and I don't think any team would. But he's going to be getting paid more than obviously what he's getting now. That's just a depth piece. So he's going to get starting money. Um, I think he, he deserves starting money for this year. I don't know if anybody's going to give it to him. I feel like teams would. And maybe the Jets don't because they have Elijah Moore. But for a team that's been so starved of... Has been so starved of, of receiving talent, it would be... A mistake to let him go i wonder if that was the play that pissed antonio brown off because i don't see him on the field right now and i wonder if that was his last play as a as a buccaneer all right um i didn't see that one obviously i, I was just going off on a let's talk about something else um i want to see what what happened on that one 
Is this it? Yes. Just straight up, man, he just got beat. Um, I think he falls, actually. No, he just straight up got beat. Who is that? Oh, is that practice? 38. I couldn't tell what number that was. Is AB on? I think that's him. Yeah, so that screen wasn't his last play. I wonder what the hell happened then for, for him to blow up like that. There he is again. I mean, he's having a good—he was having a hell of a season. It wasn't like he was just straight up not playing. He's a big part of this offense, especially with Godwin out. So, I mean, as—I don't know how much stuff's going to come out about it, you know, because teams are going to tend to keep that kind of stuff under wraps for a while. But I'm very intrigued to find out if if we do. I'm interested to see what actually happened or hear what actually happened. So, I mean, there's been four possessions, and we're already five minutes into the second quarter. This game's flying. I'm not complaining. So, um, for, from the whole uh, perspective of tanking, like, obviously you want to be Tom Brady, but at the end of the day, you know, a win doesn't do a whole lot. It would be nice for... This was the throw I was talking about before. That's got to be more on him. It ended up still being a big play. Don't know why he jumped, though. I don't know why these tight ends think that they got like these 40 inch verticals and they get to half an inch in the half a foot in the air and they don't do anything. Oh, uh, where was, what was I talking about? Yeah, obviously it'd be nice to beat Tom Brady and like, you know, Zach Wilson being one and zero against Tom Brady in his career. Cause, um, you figure they won't play the bucks for another four years and I doubt Tom Brady's still playing then, but I probably said that would say the same thing four years ago today. So, Zach Wilson being 1-0 against Tom Brady would be a pretty cool stat and a kind of nice thing for Jets fans to have, but it's not tangible, you know. A draft draft position's tangible. And I hate I'm not I'm not that guy that's saying like who actively roots against the team, like who wants to see players do bad so they lose. I'm more I want to see players play great and then if they lose, you know, you don't get upset because it helps the draft, but don't get upset if you win, you know. That's that's where I'm at. And I know that's completely opposite what I did last year, but there's not a franchise quarterback on the line. So that's where I am with that. Well, let's see if AB's on in this possession. Brady Man's been having a hell of a season, damn. He's having like a Pro Bowl type season since he's been back. Yeah, AB's still on. So I want to see what the last play is that like I wonder if he if he like messed up ran the wrong route and then they said something to him and he just got pissed. That's good pressure by the front. You know, a whole lot of dudes a whole lot of dudes are injured on this front and they still had a pretty good game against such a good line. This was ass. All right. I didn't see the holding, bro. So, I mean, that's something to be excited about is, I guess, the depth on this line. Fadukasi had a hell of a game, and they're missing their two best D linemen. Because I think JFM's still hurt, or he's just having one of those games where he's invisible. Either way, Fadukasi had a good game. I don't think he'll be back next year, even though I want him back. He's been a great piece, but I don't know. I, I he's I, I'm pretty sure he's a free agent. I could just see him leaving. You know, they, there's only so much, so many people out there that they, that they that they'll be able to bring back. Even though they should be able to bring back a whole lot because they have a lot of money. All right, I think it happened soon because I thought it was in the first half, but maybe it wasn't with the whole AB thing. But he's still in the field, so it hasn't happened yet. Damn, good, sh good stuff, bro. He's been one of the rare late-round finds that McCagden had. Solid starters that they get, you know, outside of the really first round. Really, really in the entire draft. Solid starters that McCagden drafts in the entire friggin' draft. He's been one of them. I want to see that one one more time. 
I think I went ahead. Uh, did I go ahead? I don't know. Whatever. Oh, Brady's is crying like usual. He looked like he was about to cry when they were down like 14 at a point in this game. AB still on the field. Oh wait, that was I'm I'm mad lost right now. AB just stood there though. That was weird. Yeah, I went too far back. I don't I don't get how this thing works cuz I literally like, I wish y'all could see it, because I know you probably think I'm a dumbass for the way I go back, and it always goes forward or something. I mean, they just brought too many people that time. I didn't see it. It looked like five, though. Somebody missed the uh, responsibility. It looked like Donovan Smith should have kicked out to that, or a running back should have bumped him, but that was not enough time. What the hell was I saying? No. Good job getting the edge, getting to the edge there, and really that that burst of speed. He had a good game. Ty Johnson did. He's a, that's like that's a good depth piece. He shouldn't be getting as much touches as he has to in this Jets offense, or that he was getting before. That was a nice throw to Yaboa though. But he's a guy that you like having as your RB like four or whatever. But they've kind of had to force to give him touches with their, with all the injuries they've had at the position. I thought Cole should have had that one live. I didn't really see it there, but it would have been a tough play, but in, you're in the NFL, bro. Wasn't a bad throw by any means, though. So third and nine, you'd like to be a little ahead of the chains here. More ahead of the chains. Wilson's been getting so much better at, at not forcing things. Like I feel like he used to not just throw balls out, you know, not making the, the super attractive play, but... A good play nonetheless. He's been doing better at that. Doing better. He's been doing that better. Yeah, so the A-B thing must be in the second half. So I wonder if something happened in the locker room. Because he's still on the field. They made Gronk look like Tony Gonzalez today, though. Like... I think Grok's mad overrated all time. Like I don't, I, I think he's good. Ugh, come on, bro. He just sh shat down his leg, pissed down his leg. Um, I mean, I want to say mad overrated, but people think he's better than Tony Gonzalez. I don't think so. But the man's so old at this point. This was hype. That Eccles pick. Um, I don't know what Brady was doing there. Just bad throw. So, you know, you stop them from, let's see, you stop them from getting the field goal, which with Brady, you know, with a minute left, you think that they're going to get points, but just a bad throw. I don't even think that was like he misread the coverage or anything. That was, that was actually pretty bad. That was a pretty bad throw. And, you know, the Jets get points on this drive, so that's a six-point swing. That was a good play by the by the corner. I don't one of the Auburn quarters. I don't know if it was uh, Dean or or Davis. I think I think it was one of them. And you just finally got a kicker, which is ex exciting. After two years since Jason Myers, they've been looking for someone, and Pinheiro comes in, and he's been solid. I can't remember any missed misses that he has. And, yeah, he makes extra points, which, you know, the other guys couldn't do. Yeah, AB's still on the field. Bro, he's... I'm not trying to talk about it. I'm going to have plenty to talk, plenty to say about it. I, I think that they, they should show it on this. Because 
It's not like he was like butt ass naked. You know, usually they don't they try not to show streakers, but it was such a big thing. I know Tom Brady was just pissed off. I can't even imagine being I, I'm not gonna talk about it. I just can't think about like I just feel like it'd be crazy to be one of his teammates. And he just straight up quits. I, I just want to know what happened. All right, I'm not talking about it, though. Like, oh, my God. I hate when they do that. Like, it wasn't even that bad, bro. You're a freaking grown-ass man. Oh, and you got the flag anyway. Oh, I know you didn't. Wait, yeah, they did. Oh, they got on Sportsman. Like, damn. You're a grown-ass man, bro, and you're crying about a football call? Like, seriously, dude? How how long have you been in the league, and you just throw your hands up like that? Like, grow the grow up. That was great coverage by um, Michael Carter there. He actually did a pretty good job on Mike Evans, even though... I think this is where it happens right now. Right after this punt. Like, Michael Carter... I mean, Mike Evans had a pretty good game, but... All other things equal, I thought he he was pretty up for the for the task. He's still a rookie, bro. He, I I feel like he's got a lot of potential. Like I know he's already pretty solid, but I feel like he could be better. I feel like he could end up being a a, a really solid uh, corner too. I guess. Love these jet sweeps. They love those jet sweeps. Right. Did he really need to do all that? Like, I don't know. I feel bad because I feel bad hating on the Bucks because I really do like like pretty much everyone on the team except Tom Brady. Like Mike Evans has always been one of my favorite receivers. I think Devin White's one of the better inside linebackers in the league. This screen was late. Um, Ty Johnson did a good job getting around the blocks on that one. Just just kind of navigating his navigating the field. I think the Antonio Brown thing just happened. Another good throw. So maybe they don't show it. I'm done talking about it. So, I mean, you see Zach with time in this first. Well, once once Fant goes down, you know, shit starts to go down. And he has no time to throw. But up to this point, when he's had a clean pocket, he's, he's really made the best out of it. I mean, 206, 16 for 25, 206 and a touchdown. It's a pretty damn good game against one of the better defenses in the NFL. Like I, I, I tweeted this. You know, he's playing top ten defense in the NFL, and Tom and Tom Brady's playing a bottom ten defense in the NFL. Not to mention all the receivers Tom Brady has. You know, you know it's a it's a little different now, minus A B and Godwin, but still. There's a 22-year age difference, and to this point, Zach Wilson's played better. Um, Tom Brady does a good job finishing. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna hate on him for every aspect of the game. Like, I'm just done with that. But still, like, it's expected. Like, you have to beat the Jets. Like, they're not playing for anything, and they probably lose this game on purpose at the end. And I don't think that stuff actually happens. But I think that. Nice. Isn't that him? <laughs> I was lit. Is they holding a gun or something? I hope I do hope they bring Fadikasi back, bro. He's, that was funny. Just because of that alone. I thought he got flagged for that, and that would have been so soft by the NFL, but or by this officiating crew. But clean pocket there, you know, there's a good throw. I thought he was short. He was definitely he looks short of look at just looking at that stick at the stick. He looks short to me. All right, so the Antonio Brown thing definitely happens in the third quarter. So might have already happened, and they didn't play it. They cannot tackle his fat ass, bro. Jeez. How hard can it be to tackle Gronk at this point in his career? Like, I know I couldn't, but 
The man's got bad knees. He's old as hell. Brates, they have a really good tight end room there. Like, I think OJ Howard tore his ACL, but Brates pretty solid. Like, I thought he was a solid ass tight end. A lot of these throws are underthrown. Like, he missed a couple deep balls. That wasn't really a great example, but I feel like that's got to be more on the money because it could have been picked. Just a really rough game for Brady to this point anyway. He got bailed out again. But what else is new? Yeah, so, so AB's out. I don't know why they didn't show it on the stream, like... They showed it on TV. You really couldn't put it on this. Like it's a five-second clip. There's already there's already, that's so lame by whoever made this. Like that shit was all over social media. You really couldn't put it on for five seconds. I mean, you've seen it anyway, but it's just such a big part of what happened in the game and such a big storyline that like I know the announcers are talking about it. I just can't hear the announcers, unfortunately, but. Hey, some haters, bro. That was lame. Whatever. We're going to talk about it Wednesday. I'm done talking about it. You sort of see him keep kicking away from Barrios because of how good of a returner he's been. And Keelan Cole's been good, too. Like, he consistently gets it past the 25. Like, he, he, he made a, a stupid decision. Damn, Fant fucked him up. He made a stupid decision a couple of games ago where he took it at, like, the 1. And then he ended up making it like to the 35, so it ended up being good. This is where the line starts to start playing bad. He's down a center too. I mean, come on. Adoga was friggin' rough. I Fant wasn't even in. I guess Adoga was the one who messed him up on that last play. We saw this, right? Bro, I'm going crazy. Yeah, that was the one. The 70s Adoga. He had a rough game. Just watch him on the left side here. I think it's this one. My God, he's a friggin' turnstile. He sucks, bro. When you're picking a tackle in the third round, you'd expect him to at least be a, a swing tackle. Like someone that, you know, you know is not going to be dominant and win every rep, but he's going to at least be solid when somebody goes down and has to fill in. And he has not been that. So that's been another bad pick by McCagnon. It's just crazy to think if somebody halfway competent has been drafted in the past, you know, five years before Douglas got here, and I know 2020 has been a bad class, how much better this team would be. Just because they would have such a better foundation. And I feel like they already have a pretty solid foundation just after two years of Joe Douglas. And like I said, I know his 2020 class has been terrible. And I mean that in every sense. I mean, he... Ashton Davis has been solid. You know, a lot of people hate on him. For a third-round safety, I'm not I'm not complaining on how he's played. Um, But, you, like... Three of these dudes might not even be on the team in, in two years. Like, I'm very worried about Becton for my own reasons. Like, the whole weight thing concerns me. And then they're like, oh, he had a leg injury. He didn't do cardio. That's why he so This dude might be 400 pounds right now. For a left tackle, bro, that's that's unacceptable. So I don't know how that that plays out. And I hope it plays out, you know, to the Jets' favor, obviously, and to Becton's favor. But at least at this point, like, they should, under, they should operate this offseason under the um, – assumption that he's not a good he's not the franchise left tackle because he's not he hasn't shown anything to prove that he was never a good pass protector and at least last year he wasn't and i heard in training camp he was getting just embarrassed by carl lawson which hopefully that means carl lawson's just that good of a pass rusher but i heard it was pretty bad 
that was your first round pick. Then the second round, you know, Denzel Mims, who's doesn't play when he plays. You know, he's just been friggin' terrible. Third rounds, <laughs> James Morgan, who's not even on the team anymore, and Zuniga, who never plays. Ashton Davis has been all right though. Like I'm not, I'm not saying it was a great pick, but in the third round, and you get a solid starter, like you're not drafting Sean Taylor in the third round. And I don't even know. I think he was a first rounder, but Sean Taylor was. But and I know there's good safeties drafted after the third round and everything, but you can't be that upset. Fourth round, Cam Clark, who hasn't done anything, even though he got hurt this off season. So I mean, maybe you put that on on ice but seriously it's such a bad class for your first draft class and 2021 is just such complete antithesis antithesis of that class all right i'm gonna start paying attention now um that should have been a touchdown it was a bad throw with i mean his pocket was as clean as as a pocket can be on that He could have waited another half second and would have had him. But they needed to end up kicking it. And I know I know people want like when I say I know people wanted to see me rage, like a couple of people texted me like, Are you gonna do a rant today? And you know, maybe it's one or two people. And I know I'm pretty low low energy right now, but I mean seriously, like when when if they would have pulled this game off would have been worse for the draft position i'm not going to cry about it it would have been nice to beat tom brady but again nothing tangible but everybody played good like that you want to see play good uh michael carter played good when he was in the young corners looked pretty solid wilson just had a hell of a game you know he's probably going to be up for rookie of the week voting again and he'll probably win just cuz how much Jets fans hammer that voting. But I, I actually think Jamar Chase will win. Just I just think his stats are too much that I don't think Jets Twitter will be able to overcome it. But he had a good week against a really good defense. And, you know, maybe they're missing people that I didn't read about. Like I didn't really look into it. But still a solid start for sure. Damn, that hole is wide open. This is where the, the stupid play call happens, and I'll explain it after and when it happens. Yeah, but this line is just buns, buns without anyone. They got to get better line depth, you know. I think their starting is, is pretty solid. You know, maybe you want to slide in one more starter. But that's a big thing they got to address is line depth because when one of these dudes goes down, their line just is straight up ass, and they probably lost the game because, I mean, every rep I, I watch a doga for is just terrible. I almost want to make a video of just how bad he was. All right, pause, 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 pause. Fuck, 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 damn it. I was close to getting that one. Um. All right. All right, fourth and two, and they go for it. A lot of people wanted them to kick it here because then, you know, they – then if the Bucks score a touchdown, you go to overtime. I don't think the Jets win in overtime. I don't think they have a shot to win in overtime. Just, I think they're lucky to be ahead at this point in the game, so they might as well, you know, test their luck. So I actually like going for it here. You're four and eleven, you know, playing a team that's a number two seed in the NFC after this game. So you definitely need luck to pull it off, and they've had a lot of luck up to this point. I just don't think I think the luck would run out in overtime. I think they would have lost for sure. So I I totally understand going for it here and just ending the game right now. You know, keep you know you want your destiny in your own hands, and not in the hands of number twelve who's pulled it off so many times and he ends up pulling it off here. So I like going for it. Um, in this situation, do I like what they end up doing? F hell no, I do not like the QB sneak. So apparently after the game, Salah said it was a miscommunication miscommunication between coaching and him. That basically, it was a read like, he was supposed to hand off the jet sweep, but if he saw he had the QB sneak, he could have took it. I don't know what he sees here that he could get two yards on a QB sneak, so I don't even know why that would be 
in that because it looks like if he hands off the sweep, like just from how they're lined up right now, I want to see how they bump, but it looks like he, he would have had it. But definitely the QB sneak's not there, and maybe it changes with the motion so it opens up a little, but he definitely doesn't have it right there. I mean, that linebacker's getting there before he does, and that's assuming that the line doesn't, that the line actually wins a rep here, which, you know, with, with how hurt every this line is, uh, it's, just, it's a bold assumption. So maybe things change when the motion, but right here I do not see the QB sneak at all. Yeah, I mean, nothing changes. I don't know why he thought he was going to have that. Um, As for the sweep, I don't think they get that either, honestly, just with how bad that left line is, and they got a, they got a bad start. So I don't know. Maybe Barrios has enough room, enough green there, but I have a feeling that they would have been out leveraged. And Devin White's pretty fast, so he would have got the inside leverage. And looks like that safety rolled down would have forced him inside. I think Devin White would have cleaned up the, the sweep, but I mean, there's no way to really know what would have happened. I actually, looked like he would have. I don't know. Now, nah, once they saw it, I I think they had that stopped. Uh, do I like the play call of the sweep? Maybe. I like it a whole lot better than the, than what they ended up doing. I would have personally, I would have passed it though, because I mean, if it's incomplete, like what happens? Like, game's over at that point. If you know, they could run the clock down pretty low, I guess. So then, yeah, you give the ball to Tom Brady, who doesn't even do that much. Like, that was a good play by by Bryce Hall there. I don't, I don't remember that happening. I remember that being caught. So, yeah, I mean, vintage Tom Brady, Tommy check down here. doesn't really make any good throws. And then even the bomb I don't think is that good of a throw. You know, I'm not I'm not saying that is a bad thing about these check downs, but this is what you get from a Tom. This is just a classic Tom Brady drive. doesn't make any, like, throws that nobody else can make. He just makes them. This really should have been picked. That wasn't that bad, actually, but I thought that was a touchdown. That was a good throw. Um, it's hard to tell without the all 11, all 22 footage, what coverage they were in, whose responsibility that was. But I remember Bryce Hall getting getting broke on that route. But maybe I'm thinking of a different play. Like that should have been a pick, Elijah. Elijah Riley, like he's a practice squad player. You know he, like he's a great story, but the dude's literally a practice squad player and. You, you can't have a practice squad player as your starting safety at this point in the season. You know, I, I know that rosters get thin at this point. Like, people get hurt, but you have to have a better contingency contingency plan than him. He's been a solid fill-in, but, I mean, they just lost the game because of him. Like, that's a play Marcus May makes, you know, and the Jets win this game. So, I don't know. Did the Jets try to lose this game is, is then the next topic of discussion. I don't think they did. But I can, it definitely kind of looks like it, like a QB sneak on fourth and two. That's ugly. And then that last touchdown, I think a lot, I, I think that last touchdown wasn't because the Jets suck. It was because a lot, or the Jets are trying to lose. Um, I think it was because Elijah Riley's just bad. I don't like them going for it all there. Like they could, they have two timeouts. They could have went for it short. Like, let me, let me run that back one more time and see what they do. But. I mean, you could have got closer to the end zone here and made it a little bit more reasonable. Oh, I didn't even see. Yeah, they got the two-point conversion. Um, why did they go for two? I think it was worth it. Like, I don't think the Jets have enough time to get into field goal range, and I think it was pretty trivial at that point. It's just the Jets need a touchdown or nothing. I thought... I was getting ready for Braxton Berrios to house this, and I was going to go friggin' crazy. I mean, you're at the 30 with 9 seconds. You're really going for... Let me see what they run here. I mean, they're in prevent, you know. I mean, now they're, they're playing press. Like, they got corners up, but they still got... Look how deep both of their safeties are. Like, they got one at 15 and then the other at 17 backing up. He probably ends up at 20. But the line, this is just the line gets their ass kicked again. They couldn't do anything in this fourth quarter because their line's getting their ass kicked every play. So Zach has to back up. And I mean, I guess that's why it didn't work out. 
less about the routes and more about their line just being book. And then this, yeah, I mean, nobody really has an arm to, to reach the end zone from there. So, I mean, you just try to catch lightning in the bottle. Game's over. Yeah, upsetting for sure. Like, watching Tom Brady throw that last touchdown, that definitely definitely took some years off my, my lifespan there. But at the end of the day, like, a win doesn't – like, I know it would have been nice to be Tom Brady, but a win doesn't do anything. And, you know, at this point, you just got to be looking at, like – the draft, I guess, and I'm trying not to touch on draft stuff, and I don't. I think I've been doing a good job because, like, if if it was up to me, like, I would do a draft channel and talk about that sh that stuff like 24 seven, and that'd be the only content I get up there. But um, that would just bore people half to death. So I'm gonna wait till after the regular season to start touching on that stuff, and then really get into it after the Super Bowl. So yeah, that's it. Bad, definitely a bad loss. But if you're expecting me to to see me like rage here, that's definitely not what I'm. What I'm feeling like, yeah, it sucks. Like beating Tom Brady is always nice, and then having Zach Wilson being one zero against him, and out dueling him, and then beating him—that's just that would have been sweet for sure. And obviously, I probably prefer that. Honestly, I probably prefer that to what actually happened, like them losing. Cause, but whatever. Like, there's no whatever. I'm not doing draft stuff now. That's about it. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a good rest of your day.